Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Aimstone channel. As always, let's go ahead and start this video with Bitcoin market. Today, BTC is slightly below $26,000. In fact, as of the time of this recording, it is wiggling at around $25,820. Hopefully, it will be a bit higher by the time you are watching this video. So, we will see what is going to happen. Anyway, we can notice that BTC has been wiggling at around $26,000 for the past 3 weeks. Of course, we can ignore that pump and dump. Yes, BTC literally skyrocketed all the way to $28,000 after the bullish news came out that Grayscale won the lawsuit against SEC. And then, shortly after that, BTC gradually dipped below $26,000 once again, so it looks like BTC might have been oversold when it dipped below $26,000. Bitcoin fear grid index, we are today at 40, we are remaining at fear. In fact, we are at the same level we were back yesterday. Yes, market sentiment right now is not that optimistic, considering the fact that Bitcoin dipped below $26,000 thousand bucks if we take a look at another bitcoin market sentiment indicator that would be bitcoin google trend and right now bitcoin google trend is at 17 and the all-time high was at 100 back in late 2021 where btc topped at sixty nine thousand dollars and it looks like bitcoin google trend stagnant for the past couple of months in fact since the beginning of the year and usually when this metric stagnates this is actually a great indication that the bull market could be around the corner remember guys slowly then suddenly in fact let's zoom out a bit and take a look at this monthly bitcoin chart as we can see that yes it looks like typical logarithmic bitcoin chart however it actually represents a bull flag formation at the beginning of every single bull market this exactly what happened in 2012, then BTC literally skyrocketed. Then another bull flag took place in 2016 as well as 2019. And now it looks like bull flag forms as we speak. Of course, this is indeed quite bullish. Look, yes, we do know that history does not repeat itself, but it does rhyme. So if you ask me, I think the bull market is coming, guys. Okay, now let's take a look at this quick video where actually the right hand of Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, explains what he knows about Bitcoin. Let's take a look. That leads me to this question about crypto that uh, Benjamin writes in. He says, in 2007 at the USC Law School, Charlie said, I'm not entitled to have an opinion on this subject unless I can state the arguments against my position better than the people who are supporting it. The question is, does this also apply to your Wall Street Journal article on banning cryptocurrencies? And if yes, would you care to share the arguments against your position? Well, I... I, uh, I don't think there are good arguments against my position. I think the people that oppose my position are idiots. <laughs> and... and and so I don't think there is a rational argument against my position. Well, from that video, we know that he knows about Bitcoin not much. And he said that those people who disagree with him are complete idiots. This guy is very intelligent, but sometimes he talks as such a nonsense. Anyway, moving on. Look at this. Max Kaiser response. Please stop this nonsense. Poor people cannot buy Bitcoin. And this is what Max Kaiser said. The only path poor people have to stop being poor is to buy Bitcoin, even if it's only one cent at the time. Well, Max Kaiser, one cent at the time is not going to work because we know that the fees will be relatively higher. Transaction fees, and then when you have to deposit money to the exchange, of course, it costs capital maybe if you start with like 100 bucks of course it makes a lot of sense but with one cent no it does not make too much sense moving on the first international resident of el salvador's future bitcoin city has officially moved in this is going to be the best city on the planet earth well i'm very curious and actually i want to visit this el salvador bitcoin city in fact, I am planning to move back in New York maybe by the beginning of the next year. 
That being said, if not New York, maybe some other country. El Salvador could be on my radar as well. So let's see what that city will present. Moving on, who remembered John McAfee? Yes, John McAfee has been killed or maybe he actually uh, committed a suicide about a year ago, but this is what he said. You cannot stop Bitcoin. It's like trying to stop a gunpowder. Yes, I totally agree with that statement. Bitcoin right now is unstoppable. Okay, moving on, just in, Bitcoin supporter and US president candidate RFK Jr. says Americans are being robbed and ability to own a home by BlackRock, Vanguard and State Street. Yes, we know that home prices literally skyrocketed in the past decade. In fact, it skyrocketed even more since the Corona crash happened and when Fed literally printed $5 trillion in a couple of months. So yes guys, maybe this is not BlackRock's fault and Vanguard's fault, but this is definitely the fault of money printer. You have to fix the money and fix the world. Okay, moving on. Grayscales, legal win versus SEC makes spot Bitcoin TF approval more likely, according to JP Morgan. This is what they said. It is more likely that SEC would be focused on approval of Bitcoin spot ETF applications for several asset managers after federal court ruled that regulator must review its rejection of Grayscale attempt to convert Grayscale Bitcoin Trust GPTC into ETF, according to JP Morgan. The most important element of Grayscale versus SEC court ruling was that the denial by SEC was arbitrary and capricious because the commission failed to explain its different terms of similar products, i.e. future Bitcoin ETF. Yes, we know that SEC, it looks like they're losing lawsuits left and right, even though they are a huge regulatory entity, they still have to comply by laws and by the rules. If you do not like Bitcoin Spot ETF, you just have to follow the rules. And of course, if you follow the rules and you follow the laws, the laws say that there is no reason why Bitcoin Spot ETF has not been approved yet. In fact, if we take a look at the top three Bitcoin spot ETF entities, we have BlackRock, Vanguard, and Fidelity Investments. As we can see that BlackRock currently has more than $9 trillion as an under management, Vanguard more than $7.6 trillion, and then Fidelity $4.2 trillion. All of them combined would make more than $20 trillion asset under management. And imagine if only 10% of that money would flow into Bitcoin, that would be $2 trillion would flow into Bitcoin. The price would literally skyrocket. Yes, $2 trillion officially, you can say that BTC can make like 4x or 5x from this current price. But in fact, this is not how it actually works. Yes, they could literally dry up the order book in no time. Then BTC could skyrocket like 10x. So even this $2 trillion eventually flow into Bitcoin market, BTC could probably generate like 10x from this current price. Anyway guys, let's move on take a look at some interesting Bitcoin charts. This first chart represents number of addresses with non-zero balance. And as we can see, number of addresses with non-zero balance continue to make new all-time high. In fact, it's not so far away from 50 million addresses that hold at least some amount of BTC in their wallets. Yes guys, Bitcoin is indeed unstoppable and Bitcoin adoption continues to grow higher and higher. Another quite interesting chart. This chart represents Bitcoin realized price. Right now, realized price is slightly over at $20,000 and the market price is slightly under $26,000. So what is the realized price in the first place? Realized price is basically the realized market cap divided by the number of coins in circulation. Well, in a simple language, the realized price is basically an average price that all investors pay for BTC throughout the history. So right now, an average price would be at around $20,000. So yes, majority of investors still are currently in profit, and last, if you bought BTC at all-time high. Even if you did that, this is still not the end of the world, because I am pretty sure by the end of the next bull market, you will be highly profitable. Another cool on-chain analytic chart. This chart represents Bitcoin 4 years compound annual growth rate. And as we can see, for the past 4 years, an average compound rate was at around 40% per annum, which is still a fantastic deal. However, the previous cycle, it was way better. It was at around 100%. 
Do you guys remember the rule of 72? If your asset compounds by 10% per annum, it means you will double your money every 7 years. However, if your asset compounds by 20% per annum, you will double your money every 3.5 years. And if your asset compounds by 40% per annum, it means you will double your money less than 2 years. So basically, if you invest $10,000 in less than 2 years, you will have $20,000. And the compounding machine continues to go higher. It literally goes exponential. And that's what Bitcoin is at this current time. Lastly, let's take a look at this chart from the rational root. This chart represents what we should anticipate in Q4 seasonality. Basically, as we know that Q3 just ended and Q4 just about to start. We are back to September. This is what usually happens after the September. As we can see that in back in 2015-2016, BTC literally went up from September all the way until the second Bitcoin halving. It doubled in price. But what about the next cycle? Well, the next cycle BTC was more or less flat from September until Bitcoin having. And right now we are in September yet again. Yes, I do think BTC probably will end up somewhere between thirty to sixty thousand dollars by the date of the next Bitcoin having that will take place in April 2024. Okay guys, now let's take a look at this quick video where Kathleen Long will explain why he believes BTC will reach about six figures after the next Bitcoin having. Let's take a look. Here we are. I, I just It's going to be crazy because remember also, I, I thought about this last night reading Pantera's um, um, monthly newsletter, which I always look forward to reading. And they, of course, they're starting to talk about the halving. And if you look at their model, it shows Bitcoin crossing 100,000 around about the time of the U.S. presidential election in, 19, in, in 2024. OK, right. and I made the joke, I guess my laser eyes will have to come off right about the same time as the presidential election. Satoshi did this on purpose, folks. Satoshi aligned Bitcoin happenings and bull markets to the U.S. presidential cycle. It's, I mean, yeah, it makes sense. It's six months before every single time. And anybody who's watched any having cycle knows that it takes about six months for that supply uh, reduction yep. to really start yep. to play into the market. Yep. That's interesting. Yep. I literally never, never thought about that. Oh, and yeah. 100,000 wouldn't even be aggressive for that point nope. in the having cycle, nope. right? I mean, you could nope. be at 120, 150 easily. Yeah, their, their, their price target, I think, is 134 is where it peaks out in, in the next cycle in early 2025. Right. Um, but, you know, we'll see if these models hold true. I think they will, because for very fundamental reasons, the having has a huge impact. To your point, it's going to be extremely interesting. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. And by then, you know, I mean, again, I, I actually am skeptical that there's going to be much on the uh, coming out of Congress or much change at all in the executive branch. Uh, I don't think the SEC is going to approve the Bitcoin ETFs, um, the spot ETFs. I think they're, they're fine with, with the cash settled futures. So now all eyes are on the ETH cash settled futures um, ETFs. That's coming, I think, th because you know they 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 don't have the grounds to reject it. It's the same exactly. The there's not a market yeah. ma manipulation issue um, as there is in in the spot ETFs. And let's face it, they're not wrong. I've been very balanced in what I've said about the SEC. Sometimes I've been very critical, and sometimes in the face of you know a lot of crypto Twitter being critical of the SEC, I'm the one saying, "Hey, they called this one right." There is this isn't black and white. There is a lot of crap. In this industry, I it was debating with with one of the early early Bitcoiners. Is it ninety percent of the industry or ninety nine percent of the industry that is crap, assessment. right? And, and you know, a lot of it has been flushed out, but not all of it yet. And I don't know how how much more we have to go. But there are still some highly leveraged business models. I mean, we just saw Prime Trust fail, you know, six weeks ago, right? Well, according to Kathleen Long, she believes BTC will reach like $100,000, $135,000 after the next Bitcoin halving. Probably it's going to happen by the end of 2024. And the main reason why she believes that because she relies on Pantera Capital Investment Analysis. However, it looks like she's not so optimistic regarding Bitcoin's spot ETF approval. She thinks it's not going to happen anytime soon. Well, personally, I disagree with her on that statement. Anyway, guys, let me know what you guys think. Will BTC reach six figures by the end of the next year? Comment below, subscribe, and like this video.